No, go ahead. Do the introduction. Son of a Bob and Ruckus back in the building. If you heard the little intro sound, that's the flick of the lighter. That's uh, a call back to, to Wheezy when he was Easy. in his prime, especially in those ceilings. Hear that lighter flick, you know it's going to be some fire, right? And so that's the deal here, baby. You know, it's uh, Speak On The Podcast. I'm trying to spit fire. So we you know what I'm saying got the got the best co-host out of them all. So you know it's going. Exactly, exactly. My main man, Uncle Ruckus, the eight two and the motherfucking six. No relation. No relation. <laughs> yeah, I was watching uh, Boondocks um not too long ago, and uh, it was one. It was a family episode too. But he's like, that's why I say no relation before my name. He was like, so sad. <laughs> <laughs> he was so yo. I just, so yo. I peep game. I just did it. My Moonfang boots were on 59 before I masterworked them. And after the masterwork, it hit plus 12. It, it does make sense because there's six stacks. It's not 10 stacks. It should go up by 12. I just don't think we ever paid attention to that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So they're at 71 instead of 59. And then if I go a mod, it's 81. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. Most of the time, you're going to run a mod anyway. I just oh, yeah. I'm uh... I don't never not run a mod. Yeah. Gotta run mods. <clears throat> yeah, I just like the it costs materials, but at the end of the day, it's like all your stats I think can be a guaranteed uh what is that? It's five, so they're a guaranteed ten. So you at least on the next level. And then as long as they got some good residuals in general. Like right now, oh, how did you... you keep a good balance with these drones. They cost a lot of time. So anyway, we here doing some preparations for Destiny 2 Beyond Light. This is definitely going to be a gaming focused uh, episode. So tune in or tune out. Appreciate you listening this far or watching this far if you're on YouTube. Shout out YouTube. Son of a Bob. But anyway, let's get it. So like I was about to say. Yo, I'm really looking forward to some of the changes that they're doing with Beyond Light, bro. Like, like I was just about to say before, like being able to change your ghosts and everything, customize the look a little bit differently, and then just change the perks or whatever on the fly, and then being able to actually level up your ghosts or you know like adjust the uh, yeah. slots or whatever. That's gonna be clutch. Oh yeah, and it'll make for once the ghost not actually a useless you know accessory, pretty much. Like, yeah, it's cool the little things that give you extra glimmer or whatever, but for the most part, the ghost doesn't really have an impact on the gameplay and that's a shame it's an underutilized you know aspect of the game so i'm glad they finally decided to you know do something with the ghost yeah no i agree and um because you you get to the point where you throw on guide and light and then you just hope that it has another scanner or something like that that you want like other than that the question really becomes what is the point of even dealing with it and then also it's gonna cut way down on the amount of ghosts you need to have. <laughs> Always walking around with a stack yeah. load out of ghosts. <laughs> for no like, reason. <laughs> <laughs> like you gotta have one for each destination material, you gotta have one for each type of activity. Like it's it's too much, so um, definitely definitely making some good improvements. I will say, um, I was watching, you know, latest couple of twabs, and then that Vidoc uh, joint. Yeah, Vidoc was uh, tight, bro. Yeah, and then you know, a couple of people, you know, had some comments on the Vidoc. One thing I noticed, and um, somebody had pointed it out, they was looking at the the map of a Cosmodrome. How small it is. And yeah, I'm just yeah. like, and this is kind of what I was saying, you know, a couple of months ago. I'm like, yo, they're getting rid of a lot of destinations, but I feel like. We not getting a lot in return. Right. Um, the Cosmodrome, I mean, technically we already got a little chunk of the Cosmodrome because of uh New Light. Um, now granted it's not accessible, you know, in a normal gameplay, but still we got a we got a little piece of it already. So it's already kinda a part of the game as far as space is concerned. Um and then we're losing, you know, three, four destinations when, you know, uh content vote on or whatever. And we're, the only thing we're really getting back is a, another sliver of the Cosmodrome, 
and we're getting Europa, which yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a big destination, which is cool. You know, I'm I'm ready to explore that. But um it's only one one edition for, you know, three, four losses. So it's just like I, I feel like Destiny is gonna have a tough time um keeping people's attention if they don't if they don't have some big plans for adding stuff. It's just gonna get old. Like imagine really having to stick to one destination the whole time. Um yeah, no, I feel like that's so cool. that's never really been a thing in Destiny. So unless they really start uh ramping up, you know, Dreaming City, doing a lot more stuff there, making us go there a lot more, Tangle Show like unless they start doing a lot of stuff that's bringing us to the other locations, I just don't think that Europa is gonna be enough to really hold people's attention. So that's kinda something that stuck out. I was a little disappointed. Um but one thing I I think a positive outcome from that is that there's no longer going to be um, the seasonal stuff is 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 going to be permanent pretty much like all the seasonal uh, missions and activities. So if you do decide to take a break, you know what I'm saying you're not gonna like season. I think it was ten. I ain't really play at all all the the serve stuff. I think I came in like towards the last like week or so of it or whatever. Got fell winners, but um. You know, I didn't really get to experience all that stuff, right? So I think with vaulting so much content, now they have enough space to where they don't have to do away with those little seasonal missions and stuff and activity activities. So, I mean, that's a positive. We got more space to just have stuff permanently so that FOMO isn't as bad. But yeah, it's just, I don't know. I think uh, this is the first time we're really losing something as we gain something. And it just feels like we're losing a lot more than we're gaining. Yeah, so I agree. I also feel like you kind of get that in a little bit of a balance, though, because if you consider the fact that you're guaranteed to get seasonal content over the next year, and you also know that it's not going away quickly, or at least for the whole year. You can look at that as a way of saying that the content is pretty much stacking, right? Now, I recognize from a day one perspective, it's going to feel like, oh, okay, you're missing all of this stuff. Now, unless they do something, like you said, a really exceptional with Europa and the Dreaming City, which potentially considering that uh, old boy is coming back. Um, oh, uh, Aldrin? Yeah, yeah. Like, we do have a lot of opportunities. Like, they, they could surprise us, bro. You know, them extending things aside from just aside just from the, the pandemic and everything, they could have been, you know, working on some extra layers of things. And then you got to remember that the game engine is also being rebuilt so that way they can afford to put more content in there. They should they're supposed to be bringing prophecy back um, as long as we do get a new dungeon. That's cool. Um, man, a couple of I mean, we better get a new dungeon. Right. <laughs> I mean, uh, granted, I, 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 they did give us two this year, but still, like, right. So, nah, we better get them for what? So yeah, for the new DLC plus one season, I think we'll have enough. But keeping the old seasonal content, I think, is what'll make it feel like we have a more growing world than a bring it in, remove it, bring it in, remove it type of situation, which is what we dealt with for the past couple of years. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. I just, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna get kind of sketchy. Um, cause you know, you can get through, you can get through seasonal content in a few days, uh, which is normally why they have some kind of, you know, survival horde mode type of activity where you're just doing waves and waves and stuff. Because like, as far as like little missions and stuff they give you for any, any given season, that's like a day or two worth of just going through doing you know the two three four missions right. and then whatever little uh horde mode kind of activity they got escalation program whatever version flavor of that they got um and not that you know a lot of these old destinations are frequented but going along with those destinations we're losing a lot of strikes um so just it, it's gonna affect a whole bunch of stuff and yeah i don't and Day one, we're going to be fine on content. We got a whole new story campaign. That's going to take, you know, a week or so. Um, if you're casual, longer. If you're super casual, 
probably a couple of days if you if you hardcore. And then a week after that, the season's going to drop. A week after that, Ray's going to drop. So that first at least month, solid. Uh, and then just all the grinding associated. You know, I'm sure probably around month two or month three, they'll drop that dungeon. I think that's about how long it took for them to drop the pit. Uh, I think it was like a month. But either way, I, I'm not really worried about season one. Uh, season one, because it has a new DLC, it's going to be chock-a-block full of content. Season three and on, or season two and on, um... Yeah, I just feel like it's going to, because it gets, even with all the content we have now, it gets monotonous. And we have a lot to pull from, a lot of destinations, a lot of strikes. And it still has that, that monotony, especially towards the end of any given season. Um, now, with even less strikes, less places to go, less, you know, even like less fetch quests. It, they're they're going to have to really work on either making the seasons, the season content more robust. So, you know, it lasts longer. Or something. I don't know. But yeah, I guess we shall see. We shall. But I think that you you still bring bring up the most valid point, which a lot of the YouTubers talk about, which is just being um, cautiously optimistic. You know, look forward to the stuff, but at the end of the day, recognize that not, not, none of this stuff is perfect, and hopefully they just get it right. If this really is as big as Forsaken, which is what they're trying to claim, more or less this is the beginning of the trilogy and then you know we, I'll, I'll cut them some slack in general because i would rather okay this is really a an intellectual perspective because me and you are people who are like okay you're vaulting content but maybe not to get rid of it so we got to pay for it later but so that way you can do something with the game engine and it makes it easier for us to play i can respect that i'm not tripping i'll never cry about that However, the average person that you like, if you have to advertise to somebody to play this game, then those are the people who are not going to care about game engine mechanics. They're not going to care about the architecture of the game. They're just like, give me the stuff to play and keep it moving. So you do have to worry about those folks. You and me will give them the benefit of the doubt. But then for us, we're in that boat where we're trying to get back to our year, our D1 status as players, where we really used to just run stuff on a regular basis. Because if you stuff three hours into a raid even a few times like it may be the same thing but the experience is different enough because you have so many people you're playing with you have all of these different yeah. things that you're trying to do and that you care about so we used to raid so heavily throughout d1 and then now we dungeon a lot more so yeah you just we gotta find our balance but yeah a lot of people don't care about that uh that technical crap a lot of people are like, yo, it's supposed to work, and I don't really care about anything else. If it ain't working, <laughs> <laughs> then that's about it. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. But I'm, I'm excited for, for a lot of the changes. Uh, I do. I'm, I'm excited about the, uh, the new subclass kind of yes, building, um, you know, those, those artifacts or whatever they're called. Um, the, the, the two different customizable pieces that you can get yeah. for your subclass options. I'm very, very, uh, yeah. Aspects one, and fragments. Yeah. Aspects and fragments. That's what I'm aspects yeah. and fragments. Um, very excited about that. I think, uh, it is a very good direction. That way they can make updates and changes to, you know, that particular subclass and maybe even later on, mm -hmm. uh, the other subclasses as well, without having to introduce like a oh, whole new tree. Sweet. Like they can just introduce different aspects and and whatever, mm -hmm. uh, and that that totally kind of gives you like a different kind of perk or whatever, um, without having to you know build in a whole new subclass tree. So I think one it allows them to have a, l a lot more flexibility, you know, with being able to update stuff, uh, and then you know over the long term, and then it may give. Depending on how they go about it and depending on how many options we have for each of those things, mm -hmm. it may give a, a much more um, in-depth level of uh, customization. Like Right now, it's just you got... We have a lot of options, but the options are pretty set. There's not a lot of customization like there was in D1 right. where you can pick different perks on the tree and not really have... like You could have a lot of the same perks as somebody else, but mm -hmm. not all of the same perks. Right. So it was similar, but it was still your own flavor. Um, like, you know, your knife perk and everything. Now it's kind of like you're, you're set, you got presets. So you, any, anybody running, you know, top tree, uh, don't they, they, they all going to have the same 
abilities. Yeah, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? So I like the idea that even if we have some of the same perks or some of the, you know, the, the same super, but we might not have the same jump, we might not have the same melee, you know, things like that. Um, yeah, I miss that I think that's of it, bro. I really do. You said what? I said I missed that aspect, that aspect of it, that custom aspects, because like you could run, yeah, exactly, whatever that's, you that's felt like, but you could still run blink though. You know what I mean? If you were in a warlock, yeah. So like being able to do things like blink and stuff, you know, and not having it locked into to one specific type of thing, that would be cool. Now, granted, I do think you know they they got to be careful about you know how they go about certain things and what they pair, because certain combinations would just be disgusting. Right. Right. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. So they got to make sure they do they do good to balance and not let you just do any old thing. But I mean, they had a pretty good system in D one. They did. Um, I didn't, I didn't mind that. I remember that was one of my, my biggest complaints about uh, D two year one was how they changed the super system. I was like that. There was no need to change that. It was fun, and I I hated the presets. That was like one of my biggest complaints uh, year one was that the presets were dumb. There there was no customization. Um. You were kind of locked into a certain, almost to a certain play style based on, you know, what that specific subclass option offered you. Right. And it was just like, yeah. So, I, so them bringing that level of detail back, I think, is definitely a good move. Yeah, D Destiny, uh, Bungie did the same thing that Respawn did with um, Titanfall going into Titanfall 2. The original Titans, you could basically do what you wanted to do with the subclasses of the Titan, and they could all have different, the same loadouts if you wanted to, different ways you could do it. But then they created a system where pretty much every individual Titan had their abilities, and that was pretty much it. You couldn't do anything beyond that. Now, it ended up making for a much more fluid game on the whole, because you knew what you were going up against. It was like, you didn't have to figure it out. If you went up against a big dude with a certain gun, you're like, okay, I know what big dude that is. I'm not going to miss out on that. But that lack of customization did feel like a, a big loss in my opinion. Um, so hold on real quick. So we got uh we got burger, ice cream cone, and then a uh I guess an open oval thing with three legs sticking out the bottom. Burger and ice cream cone are easy to describe. Oh, so I already yeah. found the uh, witches. I don't know which one they're at. Okay, but... they're at the one with the three legs at the bottom. Burger is right below me to the right. Ice cream cone is at the usual very bottom spot. Okay. All right. So yes. Yeah, fact, where did you revive? Up there. I revive. Did yeah. you already kill the uh, witch? The witches? No, nah, I, I was going to get a uh, sword. All right. Let me. Uh, I got melted by. Uh, let me take out this ogre. Very angry. I decided to bring his Nagis out. Which it does a lot of damage, but having to reload for Hone Edge just takes forever. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Alright, I'll take out Ice Cream Cone. So, yeah, yeah. Um, super customization is just going to be. But that's what I mean, like. It's, it's really hard when you've been playing this game for a long time. You want to appreciate all the new stuff that's coming, but that doesn't make for you to play the game longer. It just makes you allow to do a little bit more with the content that you're already playing. Yeah. It's really hard to find that balance, bro, because you're just like, all right, thank you for the for doing this particular thing, but it's like, that's not going to make me play the game another hour. That's just going to make me enjoy it a little bit more for that moment, but it's really tough, but to really find that balance, I think. So I think what they probably will end up doing is making uh, different aspects and different fragments. Like you get them kind of like how you get like exotic weapons uh -huh. or catalysts or whatever. You got to do certain activities or, you know, get certain triumphs to get certain aspects and right. stuff. So they'll make it. I think I don't know if they actually said this or if it was just speculation, but I think uh, one, that would be the smart way to go about it was you know, you don't just get them by like an XP kind of grind or maybe get some of them from an XP kind of grind, mm -hmm. but maybe have some, you know, raid specific ones. Like you can only get this fragment or this aspect from completing the raid or completing certain challenges within the raid. Um, and that way it at least gives you something to, to kind of work towards. I hope so. I hope that's the case. That would be smart. Kind of like they've been doing with the mod. And then that's another thing. The weapon mod system is going to be better. 
if you remember, because they're talking about yeah. uh, your your ar the armor mods. Like you'll be able to stack them up or stack up like the uh, the raid specific stuff has its own slot, so you can do that. Yep. Um, I look forward to that because you know raid gear before used to have stuff that was. Hold on, I'm about to dial some dumb stuff. Hold on, let me back up. Raid weapons before were specific to um to the rays like they helped you destroy the different eyes and all of that kind of stuff like, yeah you know what i mean and that's how it should be you should have some additional benefits to completing certain content aside from just getting the gear and looking good which is another thing that they were talking that some some people in the community were complaining about apparently you know me and you don't raid as much so with a lot of the raid armor they were upset because the pretty raid armor that looked good ended up being paid through Eververse for a particular season instead of it being completely raid based and it's like yeah they got to get out of this Eververse stuff like I understand monetization and everything and I'm not upset about it in general you know what I mean but it's like bro we pay good money for this game as it is everything the baseline should be awesome stuff for everybody especially when I'm putting in hours of gameplay and then after that be like okay but we got a different spin on it like this stuff makes you look like a worm god fine but then if you want you can get this version of the worm guide with a little more spikes on it a different helmet a little uh, some other colors like add it you know for that way if you want to add that extra level of customization you can but yeah the game is not cheap by any means so the baseline oh. awesome stuff should just be included and the fact that it often isn't is a problem in my opinion well i think now people will have uh, less to uh complain about at least for the people that have Game Pass, because now oh, functionally, yeah. if you got Game Pass, it's, it's like free. Yeah, so, that's how I feel. I'm um, mad about that for sure. It is kind of like almost, I won't say backhanded, it is kind of really incentivizing Game Pass, which, you know, you say you what you will about, about it. Right. <laughs> um, right. I have it. It's not a big deal to me, but I know not everybody has it. Not everybody wants it. Right. Um. But for the people that do have Game Pass, that have access to the to the game with Game Pass, they really can't complain about monetization anymore because you're really not paying for the game at that point. Like, yeah, you're paying for your monthly subscription to Game Pass, but I, I don't know how many people got Game Pass because of Destiny. I know I already had it. So for me, that's just, I got it for free. Mm -hmm. Right? So at that point, I can't really come. Oh, shoot. I'm about to die like a scrub. I forgot how many goons there was. Is this the middle section? I thought you said uh, old girl was about burger. Oh, God. Burger. I think I just thought about burger, but I think burger was like the middle. Uh, We'll see. I can't really see the door. Oh, no. No, you was right. Yeah, I think. Oh, wow. no, this does look like middle. I think the uh, last, let me see. The last time we talked about which one looked like. Yeah, that's burger. The one above you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I just got smoked over his <laughs> <Smoked. ass. laughs> middle. I ran over there with a sword. That was not the right thing Thought to have. Sweet. With yeah. all those people shooting at me. I bought a I literally bought a knife to a gunfight gun and I lost. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um yeah, let me go up there. Yeah, the spawn oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the monetization thing. Oh yeah. Okay, um okay. yeah, so the Eververse, I do agree that like anything raid related should not be should not be something that you get from Eververse. I do because it it almost kind of it cheapens the the raid at that point. You got these people that are you know going through one of the harder in game activities, and somebody basically could just pay their way to you know getting getting something similar. So no, I agree with that, but just monetization in general, they they've really made it to where you know if you just have a basic service from Xbox at least. I can't speak for the PS players or the PC players. But, you know, if you have a basic Xbox service, which a lot of people already had, um, you get in the game for free. Mm -hmm. So if they want to charge for whatever else, I, I personally can't complain about that. Right, right. Yeah, rolling it in there is a good idea when you consider the aspect from uh, Game Pass. Uh, but, I mean, it's, it's moot now because we're talking about something that was old. They might not be doing that now, per se. So we'll see what the raid yeah, gear and everything looks like. And then, yeah, it's just kind of a weird aspect. You you really brought up a good point. <laughs> that's, 
I really can't argue that point. Like, if you're paying for it, 15 bucks a month. But then you got to remember, too, that doesn't include season pass. It doesn't. It doesn't. So that's just... Um, see, but season pass is the smaller of the costs. Like, the the base game, that's the, the $60, $70 investment. And then season pass, you don't have to pay for it. You still can play all the season pass content. True that. You just don't get the, the, the bonuses, bonuses that you yeah. get from having the season pass. Ooh, yeah, you don't get the bonuses, right? Yeah, which again, if you if you a hardcore player, yes, you're gonna you're gonna probably get the season pass because you want the bonuses, you want to get your light up quick. I get it, but again, it's, that's completely optional. I think um, Bungie's business model is probably one of the least predatory that I've seen as far as like their microtransactions and monetization. Like they really give you the option to play this whole thing for free. If if you're an Xbox player, you can play the entirety of the game, season passes included, mm-hmm. for free. There is no activity offline. Yes, there's people that have a slight edge, but there's no free-to-play game of this style. Like, yeah, you got the arena games, the Apexes, and all of those things that are free-to-play, but it really is just PvP. Right? This is a PvP, PvE, RPG, like huge, huge, huge game, a lot of different facets. And yeah, essentially, it is free-to-play. They definitely incentivize you to spend some bread, but if you say I'm not, I'm not gonna spend another dime on Destiny. Guess what? You can still play Destiny, which is more than you know a lot of a lot of you know big title games can say. True, and especially another good thing is the way that they're doing New Light with the dude that walks you through the Cosmodrome. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. Like when you really stop and talk about everything that the game is becoming, we're getting a lot. It's just that it's not a lot geared to the hardcore player and sometimes i think we have to check our mindsets yeah because you know we go hard in the paint like we'll run pit prophecy nightfall like master nightfall and if we were raiding we'd probably do at least a raid a week you know what i mean but that's really not the average person in fact you know a lot of people really don't do that and those are guys that we see online all the time and they don't even play all of those different things because you know our light was way higher than theirs, and we're still behind the power curve when it comes to light because people were grinding even harder than us. That's um, a fact. We seen. Remember, we seen Buddy with yeah. uh, 1090 like a right. month, a month or two into the season. <laughs> Wasn't even far in, man. He was kill- casual. Like, it was too, like, like it was prob- I think it was like our our second or third uh, prophecy run. So it was it was pretty early. Oh yeah, ago. it was right, right. It, it wasn't like beginning of the season. But Matter still, of fact, it, we needed him to finish it the first time, right? Didn't he help us do our first completion? Nah, he. I don't think he was the first completion. I think he was. Maybe, maybe he was. I I feel like maybe he was. Yeah, because we were grinding really hard, but we just couldn't. Oh, he about to kill me, crap! And we just couldn't Hold beat on, the boss. Get the aggro. Yeah, I think like because we went in because our first. Attempt it was because remember I didn't record him. Yeah. Yes, I was tight. The completion. Right. But right. yeah, so this is you know that was our first real completion, second attempt at at the dungeon. Homie was ten ninety. Yeah, he was up there. Like, man. bro, we're at the end of the season and not even close to ten. Not even close, bro. I'm a strong ten eighty two. Strong ten eighty two. <laughs> like solid ten eighty two. And that's about Very it. Very well established, respectable ten eighty two, but no, not like maybe sniffing at 1083 but like right right it would take probably another at the rate that we're going now granted we've we've stopped our our you know power light grind right, right. quite a bit since hitting you know 1080 it isn't as big of a deal but still like for you to be 1090 that much grinding like i could i could definitely understand how like the hardcore players are just like yeah I'm, enough I'm right tired of some of this stuff. and that's selfish though we can't you know it is that's really it selfish is. you got to check yourself in those kind of aspects man like check your privilege dog like okay yeah, you ain't nobody it. telling you to play 20 hours a day right <laughs> for two months yes you're a youtuber <laughs> like, it's nobody's fault that you're a youtube content creator bro like yeah um so anyway and you know what i'm extremely looking forward to the oh, okay I'm extremely looking forward to the new light experience because I mean, you know you try to get people into the game and it's difficult to sell them on Destiny because the the learning curve is different. In year one, I had no clue. In, yeah, D1 year one, I had no clue what was going on, but it was a first person. All I needed to know. 
They, yeah. they taught you bounties. They taught you strikes. Okay, you were taught that array, power level stuff. Oh, okay, great. But it, it wasn't a fire hose, right? You know, learning about the light levels and the vault and all that kind of stuff. It just it just made sense over time. But this is such a robust game. Day one, you have just like when me and you first started playing. Um, what's that third person Destiny like game that Jax is always playing? Warframe. 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 It was pretty overwhelming. Like all of these planets, all of this stuff that you can do. How do we? How do you even begin to yeah, where, access it? Where do you it? start? Right. <laughs> where, where do you start? What What does this stuff mean? And yeah, that was something that a couple of the content creators were saying. Like, there's a lot of things that we take for granted being D1 players, like going to talk to um, uh, Raul and and uh, the little robot. The uh, um, uh, what those what are those things called? The gunsmith, gunsmith, oh, dude, the gunsmith, Raul yeah. Zavala. Like, we take that for granted because we've been playing, but. A new light player don't know who the hell Zavala is. No clue. A new, a new light player is like, well, who, who's this guy? And yes, new right. Light Why are they significant? Talk to these people, but you don't, you don't really understand. Like, like, what are you talking? What, what is a vanguard? What is a, what is it? What is a strike? Like, <laughs> what is crucible? Like, right. It, even just the terminology, they don't do a good job at like telling you what, what all the people around the tower. Oh shoot! Damn, I wasted that. Uh, I had to switch back over my rocket. That's gonna be. Ammo. Luckily, I got double hand, heavy ammo finder, so I'll get it back quick. Um, you ready to start? Yeah. Okay. Oh, what's up? Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh! Uh, too late. Nah, whatever. Don't matter. Too late. I forgot that I'm not using radiant, so I'll just be dropping you some. Uh, what you thought? Some riffs. We'll see if we can get through it. If we can get through it, then whatever. We're good. If not, yeah, like... this this might be a botch for now. I'm not getting. Uh... So for whatever reason, I get I didn't get the triumph for um for all this. Like, yeah, time. last time. Yeah, that's weird. Um, maybe it's because we did the thing with the uh the switching out but i feel like when you when we did it when you got your flawless thing yeah i feel like we still switched out we, and you still yeah. got it um yeah, I or i, I think is. i switched out and you still got it but whatever i didn't get it maybe i died when i wasn't paying attention i don't know i don't know um, well, it could have been that's just weird i don't remember you dying i definitely didn't yeah i don't remember dying point. either that's why like when i got to the the next part of the jump puzzle and i didn't die i'm like oh wait we had the following right. counter i ain't died yet right um but yeah, so like, there's just a lot of things that that we take for granted, Ooh. having been playing since you know D1 year one. Uh, you um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that I'm yeah, about to die. Brand, about to kill me. <laughs> brand, brand new to the game, right, they're they're go. not gonna. There you go. They're not gonna have that knowledge. All right, I'm about to take one of the lights out. Okay, I thought I was, but is not Nagi see the chest ain't strong enough? Everything you see, everything in this game is a headshot. Is stupid. Like, come on, like. Why does Izanagi's with Hone Edge times four needs it need a headshot? That doesn't make any sense. That's a powerful gun. Like, come on, cuz. Should not I require agree. precision at all. I guess a red bar, a red bar knight, bro. Come on, cuz. You about to die. Uh, back here. Uh, nah, I should be alright. I got more ways slicing these now. Hold on, real quick. I'm a little sticky. I do need some damn heavy. I'm about to go on a little, little heavy. Heavy stroll, All right, break. Uh, I'm definitely okay. I got three. Man, if you take right. someone to grab oh, his doors, I got you. Almost botched that. I, <laughs> I forgot I had to. Yo, I, I spent so moment. much time in this area. I forget there's an actual purpose for me being here. Sometimes. Right, right. <laughs> and especially like, with radiance being so comfortable, you have no reason to leave. But when it's not there, yeah, you got to like, gotta bounce. Like, hold up. I forgot that if I don't tap that every so right. often, we will It's die. cool. I was on my way anyway, so it was good. I was ready for you. Yeah. <laughs> but um, ah, I think, I think the new light is... Dead. Ooh, there it is. Shoot. All right. Let me do that shenanigans, bro. That. Get the revive. Oh, damn. Right, oh, so... Right um, Hopefully don't pick it up. Revive. Oh, my goodness. I knew it was going to do that. It's all damn. good. I hate it. So, like, Just hit the like joint. if you're too close to the orb... Yeah. It'll like it'll confuse the operation. God damn. So um, I'm gonna have to drop this because as far as the new light experience though, I can rock with that because it's. I mean, what I'm what I'm trying to get at was I saw the clip of what the character looks like, and I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, just in general, I think homeboy looks uh looks looks good. Uh, we can go. Back. Let me see. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Right, let me activate my super and try to knock some dudes out. This is insane. It's a lot of ass. 
They are. Yeah. They're not playing today. Not today, bro. Not today, <laughs> Sam. We are not playing today. It was bro. like, yo, y'all came through a volley the last week. Hold on. Hold yeah, this. Yeah, you know how it'd be. It's cool. All right. Second order on the way. Get ready to slam. All right. <laughs> ready, ready, ready. All, All right. right. Yeah. Yeah. My listeners, like, uh, what's the order? What is the slam? I don't even think I have about? the right. Oh, I just wasted his Nagi shot. Crap. Yep, surely don't have the right dodge. Ooh, the invisibility dodge. Oh, yeah. my God. They are busting. Oh, man. He Woo. Right. That's heavy, bro. Hold on. Let me try to get a rift out. Oh, of these I'm about to die. Oh, yeah. I see that. Oh, yeah. Rift down. Can I get out of there? Oh, last guard ain't standing, huh? They wanted all the smoke, it looks like. Uh... You came in here. Too casual. <laughs> All this talking. Oh, so y'all gonna try to make a podcast and play like we sweet? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. We came in here like it was sweet. Like, man, what? We kill you in our sleep. Acolytes, like, say less. Ah, come on, come on. There we go. Oh, shoot. Luckily, shoot. it ain't nerf guillotine yet. Sheesh. That's gonna be a hurt piece of PvE. Come here, come here. Ah, ah. You want smoke? I got you. Yeah. I got the smoke. Let's get it. All right. I got an order for you. Drop that off. I don't have no rift, though, dog. You just going to have to hold it out for me. I got grenade on you, right? Yeah, I got grenade. All right. I got my phone over here recording my video. I can't even see. <laughs> can't even see my grenade because it's in front of the screen. Oh, no. I'm about to die again. Sheesh. All right. What's up? He almost dead though. You can probably throw a void grenade down or something to knock him out. And just watch out for the couple of axe. Oh no, you good. You sure? Yeah, you got caught in the crossfire though. Alright, I got the orb. We out of here. Oh snap. It's about to burn up. Oh, 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 oh! We made it. We made it. Slam City, baby. There we go. Let me see. Don't matter what super we use, bro. We bosses around here. Come on now. Let me switch over to my Zeno. I really didn't think we weren't going to finish it, but obviously just like a little bit, <laughs> a little yeah, bit more effort. Was, was, was like a Dream second. Breaker. I've never gotten like... this gun before. Uh, what, what, what was it? It's a fusion rifle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dream. I've never, never had this gun before. Damn. No heavy this, guy? I've been playing this gun in that long. I've been hearing the weapons and stuff. Right, I'll, put it, I'll put the right subclass on this time so we get to go. Um, Ghetto. So, yeah, I'm look, it's looking like, oh, crap, almost died. So, yeah, I'm going to record a podcast with my homie Warren for tomorrow. Oh, we both done it. Yeah. And then um, my senior chief, she's retiring. And she has a, her own business doing, like, these soaps. For anybody listening, hit up. Let me make sure I'm saying this right. Moi. It's uh, M A W A H H dot com, I think. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Let me see. Oh, I slid. Oh, no. Ooh. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. Yep. I... Yeah, it's like um, she, do, she does. Well, let me see. Body lotion. She's got a lotion bar, whipped butter. All types of stuff. So for anybody listening, especially the ladies out there, she does uh, self-care products, man. Free shipping for orders over 75 bucks. And then there she oh, she's also gonna also gonna be a part of Small Business Saturday for November 28th, which is a thing. You know, like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, they do small business Saturday. Oh, that's dope. And um, a lot of small businesses on their storefronts will offer various discounts and stuff so you can uh get on there and whatnot support them and everything so yeah shout out to my senior chief i sent you the link so she can book a uh excuse me a time frame so we can get her on the podcast in general uh help her out hopefully and hopefully help me out as well all right but, yeah we'll see what's up shout i'm out trying to, i'm trying to right that's what i'm saying i'm trying to balance trying to branch out a little bit see what's good out there do things a little different. I didn't even know you could. I didn't even know this was a, a thing right here. This is pretty cool. I've discovered a ledge on this part of the map I didn't even know existed. 
Well, I didn't know the ledge existed. Um. Anyway, so yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to do different things there, and then I've been really or on a personal note for everybody watching listening. I've been really discouraged from editing and doing a lot of stuff because you know my finger was all beat up. You know, I showed my claw in the video, and then I'm sure most people watching this know that I've uh, been injured. You know what I mean? But oh my gosh, he act like you're crushing me. Here you go, chill, buddy, chill. There we go. Because I've been injured and everything, but everything's coming back to normal. Got the cast off yesterday. Um, well, today's the 28th. I got the cast off on the 27th of October. And I'm glad. It feels good. It feels good to be recovering out here. Are you back, uh, you back to 100%? Or are you Ooh, no, still not recovering? Even close. Just not even close? Yeah, not even close. I'm at like, uh, God, man, maybe 60, if that. So I don't have any thumb function right now, except for pinching oh, wow. items that weigh no more than like six ounces. Um, that's one part of it. And uh, my thumb is still swollen. I have to do some massaging to get the swollen material out of the tissue. Um, and then I'm still rocking the claw for some sort of protection. I had to scrub off a whole six weeks worth of dead skin. Oof. Yeah. Brody. And then my uh, thumb still healing where the stitches were the top part of this incision uh location isn't fully healed yet so still gotta wait for that to get better as well all in all though progress is being made appreciate the love support everybody for showing liking the photos and everything got it oh and then on, the, on another personal note my uh my sister is recovering she got uh some, st some stuff taken out of her the same day i got the cast removed and uh, we made a little joke i was like Look at us both out here, broken gang gang. <laughs> <laughs> Cripple gang. Cripple gang out here. Um, I feel like nah, I'm going she, the wrong way. Oh, nah. It's, oh, yeah, I think this is. Yeah, I feel like it's back the way you're going, so you probably won't find him. I'm going to just go to the. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just go to, to the afterlife, apparently. <laughs> yeah, we, we reacted at the same time, too. <laughs> that was funny. I'm um, turning around. I seen I seen the destination, but I didn't see them obstacles. Right. <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm gonna just hop hop over to this little ledge. I forgot yeah, this yeah. Uh, spiked rolling pin that they just have in the middle of a cavern. Yeah. Um. I love gotta love that hive decoration. That hive gotta decor. love it. Yeah, man. You know, they gotta <laughs> keep their put, feng shui. <laughs> we're gonna put these these giant, you know four foot spikes and this big rolling pin thing we're gonna have it on a rotating access and uh all right, yeah, that's all three of them gonna, so we're good <laughs> yeah, it's just gonna you know it's just gonna be there oh i got smacked by no one just now mm. no, one, no one's ever supposed to come down here but if they do right you know, if they do yeah it's this marvel magnificent decorations so anyway personal stuff aside everything's everything's rocking you know, and I'm making progress. I'm just trying to keep rebuilding this thing. And I'm actually going to be doing a lot more of these episodes. And I want some randoms to show up, man. We can talk about anything, you know. We're rebuilding. And I'm going to just start spamming DMs. Like, yo, what's up? You trying to do this podcast? And then the other thing, what I actually have to do is sit down and look at the calendar. You know, I say I'm only doing Tuesdays and Thursdays. But, you know, we're recording right now casually. And so I'm going to start sitting down probably on a weekly basis and probably spread out for like two weeks or something like that and just look at any appointments I have, any work related stuff I have, and then just try to knock out way more recordings um, on a consistent basis. I think that's like the best way for me to go moving forward um, because some people just can't record when I can. And I still have the time. I have all the free time. Shout out to getting my bachelor's degree. I got all the free time to just keep rocking on. So. We'll see what's good. And then me and you will probably just do a couple more of these in general. Um, but yeah, so to the folks watching, my greasy face and listening up there, appreciate you. This is Uncle Ruckus and Son of a Bob for episode six of the Speak On It podcast. We about to take it down. Ruck, do you have any parting words? Uh, oh, vote. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, real rap. <laughs> I've been lazy oh, about that. I need to go turn in my absentee. I need to stop playing. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it in yeah, person. I'm doing early, though, because I ain't trying to be in the mods on election day. But, yeah, go vote. Word, word. All right. 
that's our words of uh gamingness and wisdomality yeah we know that that's not a real word but uh deal with it anyway cool thanks folks much love peace